Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of On Board with Cruise Passenger, brought to you today by Regent Seven Seas Cruises. I'm Rose Jacobs, your host. And I'm Peter Lynch, publisher of cruisepassenger.com.au and Cruise and Travel Luxury Magazine. Now, Peter, I hear that you've been starving for today's <laughs> podcast episode. Am I right? Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, as you know, our listeners have a taste for what's in store for them today. Okay, well, shall we get straight into it? I think we've given a few dad clues already. Um, a few dad jokes. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about food. Yes, and look, did you know that research recently conducted shows that 49% of Regent travellers consider fine dining to be a hobby. A hobby. A hobby. In other words, they really enjoy their food. (laughs) (laughs) And I hear 44% consider themselves to be wine collectors. Collectors as opposed to drinkers. (laughs) Or both. Absolutely right. That's very refined. But what it says is they know a thing or two about food. And they know a fine wine when they see it. And they want to combine that with their cruising. Absolutely. And as we know, food is one of the most important parts of taking any kind of holiday. So today we're going to unpack (laughs) a bit of a hamper from Regent Seven Seas and look at just what's on offer on their ships. Because Regent Seven Seas has introduced Epicurean Perfection which is making my stomach rumble already, (laughs) 128 Epicurean escapades, 11 new Epicurean spotlight voyages in 2023, 2024 and 2025. Now, there's no one better to tell us all about this than Regent Seven Seas Cruises' Elsa McLean, who is the Senior Business Development Manager um, for Australia and and also one of our dear favourite guests because Elsa is Indeed. the best storyteller I've ever met in my life. And a bit of a gourmand, I would uh, <laughs> yeah. wager. What an intro. Thank yeah, you very no much. No pressure. Oh, no pressure. I'm truly <laughs> delighted to be back with you again and I'm getting hungry as well just talking yes, about all of this. Exactly. So, so Elsa, we're in for a treat with you today. Um, and as Peter mentioned, 128 new experiences on offer with 11 new Epicurean Spotlight Voyages. Tell us, what does this involve? I think it's really important to understand what drives our clientele. You know, what is it that they're looking for on a vacation? What is going to make them come back time and time again and tell all their friends about it? And from those statistics that you mentioned, Peter, people really love their food and wine. So we have always served incredible cuisine on Regent, Mm. but we thought it was about time that we reminded everyone of that. So, yes, our new brand (laughs) pillar, Epicurean Perfection, absolutely sets a new standard for us as well that we must live up to. (laughs) But it's, it's really quite a pleasure. So we have curated some new itineraries with celebrities, with sustainable winemakers, with uh, sommeliers, master chefs, to make sure that when people are coming onto our ship, not only are they going on a cruise, but they learn more about the region they're going through and it is then complemented on board with some wonderful extra gourmand experiences. Fantastic. So tell us about some of the shoreside experiences where your guests will, will actually get to taste the culture of a local place. We've got such a range of shore excursions that are part of what we do with Epicurean Perfection. So one of the things they can do is a cooking class in our culinary centres and then they can go shoreside with the chef. They might go to a local market in oh. Bordeaux and get some beautiful fresh produce and get some wine as well to pair it and then come back on the ship, have an incredible cooking class and then they all get to eat what they've exactly. made and, oh, and then just <laughs> slowly stroll or wander in the direction of their suite and it's a lovely end of day. <laughs> just to be sure though, you don't have to cook um, your own food and then eat your own food because I would much rather <laughs> yeah. know that I'm eating something prepared by someone else. You certainly don't want to eat my food. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's absolutely up to you. The choice is certainly yours, but it's all part of the experience to bring those local flavours onto the ship so they really feel they've got a good sense of uh, of the authenticity Mm. of the local culture. Now, I hear that the Mediterranean is going to be a very popular spot for these new itineraries. No surprises I couldn't pick it anywhere better (laughs) on earth in terms of food. That's my favourite, favourite food and produce. So talk us through that. 
I could not agree more. And I'm the same. I have been so blessed in my time with Regent uh, and traveling around the world. I've been to more than 130 countries and my favorite is still Italy. It's mm. very cliche. Mm. I know. Also, but I'm hey, you know, <laughs> absolutely. you cannot beat the food, the climate, the people, the vibe, mm. the joie de vie. I don't know what Just it is, but it's pasta. something. <laughs> yes, the pasta. <laughs> absolutely. The <laughs> pasta as well. <laughs> Spaghetti alle vongole. It is oh, my just favorite. exquisite. All right, guys. So, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, yes, most of these itineraries are going through France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, really encapsulating the, some of the beautiful ports of call where we know that we can get the best fresh produce and have some beautiful local experiences in town. My favourite places you've mentioned, as well as Greece and Turkey, some of these finest regional delicacies um, and, and a lot of history behind it too. So you're learning about the food and its traditions and maybe some of Nonna's old recipes along the way yeah. as well. Exactly. During the the pandemic, yeah, yeah, exactly, yes. Um, during the the pandemic, when you know we were had an opportunity to reassess some of the things that we we're doing, our culinary masters and the heads of our culinary programs with Regent, some of them went back into the regional areas where their heritage is from, mm. and did exactly that. Went back to the villages where their nonas are from, and learnt some of the family recipes. And then they spent some time with all of our chefs on uh, board our fleet, and really integrated that with our menus oh, on board. Wow. So it's just elevated it to another level, but it's a level that feels even more like home than before. It's very special. I love it. Well, I don't have that in my home, I have to say. <laughs> but yeah, you said elevating it. And we're already talking about, um, you know, this is a six star cruise line. So, you know, when we're talking about elevating to another level, um, you can really put your mind to it and use your imagination. Okay. So let's talk about the first Epicurean spotlight that we're really focusing on today. And I hear that this one is all about the food. This is a really exciting one, I feel. And I think I'm going to show my age or my senior <laughs> title here. But this one is with Chef Tommaso, who is very well known in uh, California, and his dear friend who was featured as Elaine's boss on Seinfeld, oh. celebrity John O'Hurley, who's a fantastic comedian and, yes, spotlighted as uh, Elaine's boss on Seinfeld. Oh. In incredibly fun man. And they've had a wonderful partnership for about 20 years now. So I love this idea because when they come on board, they'll be doing a combination of some uh, master classes, um, some uh, food tasting experiences, but also uh, John will be doing his fantastic show in the theatre. So they're bringing food and entertainment together. What a great idea. Uh, I think it's a really, really great that partnership. sounds fantastic. I've heard about it. It's the one man show and it's called A Man With Standards. A Man With Standards. I'm a huge fan of Seinfeld. I used to think that I was Elaine for quite a few years there when I had the dark hair. But yeah, look, that just sounds like one of those experiences that is next level, as you've said. That's precisely what it's about. Um, and uh, let, should we talk about the ships? Yes. So this particular one is actually part of Seven Seas Grandeur's inaugural Mediterranean season. We're so this is our brand new vessel. Yes. She'll be the sixth vessel in the Regent fleet. She'll absolutely be a heritage of perfection, mm. carrying just under 750 guests, all sweet, all balcony. Wow. I mean, this ship is absolutely knocking the socks off any possible competitor. She will be something breathtaking. In November of this year is her first sailing in November 2020. And did you know she's actually going to be the first ship in the world to have a Fabergé egg that resides yes. on board? I've heard of this. It looks fabulous. Just amazing. So unique. It's being made for us at the moment. It has 30 pearls <gasps> around the outside, one for each year of Regent service. Oh, wow. And it's going to be opened up to uh, reveal a surprise that's inside the egg. It's going to be a very special experience. I'm sure held under lock and key on board. <laughs> yes, but, absolutely. Uh, yeah, slightly, very, very unique. Slightly but different I... to the kinder surprise <laughs> eggs that we have at our place. Only um, <laughs> are kids allowed on board this ship? I just want to make sure you're going to have it carefully secured in a glass case. <laughs> I love the fact that um, that Regents Regent always goes over the top with these ships. It's so clever. And I remember when they um, they launched um, uh, their uh, newest ship, the um, Explorer. Uh, Explorer, the, yes, the Explorer, yes. They closed the uh, Italian marble um, factory for one and a half years. <gasps> no, to create enough marble <laughs> to put inside this ship. And I think there was a uh, glass blowing factory in um, the uh, Eastern Europe that spent a year producing the globes 
on, on their light fittings. You've done your homework, Peter. Is that, is that where the phrase, yes, lost your marbles, yeah. comes from? <laughs> Absolutely staggering. And the art on these ships yes. is, is another great point. You can take a self-guided art tour that is yep. really quite exquisite. Now, I need to know, though, in terms of details for our listeners, um, we're already spoiled for choice and luxury, but... For the itinerary that's through the Mediterranean as part of Granger's inaugural um, season, departing when? The 14th of August of 2024 from Athens to Barcelona, a glorious 10-night sailing. Oh, that does sound amazing. And in terms of um, what people can experience along the way, what's included? So with the any cruise with Regent, you know, the inclusions are absolutely endless. So unlimited shore excursions in each port of call, Internet is included on the ship because we all love to have, make people feel FOMO oh, when they're yeah. back home and yeah. post all of our pictures FOMO. on social media. Exactly. <laughs> all of the specialty restaurants are included. All beverages are included. Uh, there is so many things to experience. Uh, laundry. Oh, oh, how could I forget oh, laundry? Oh, my favourite. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone's favourite laundry. It is included so that you can, especially for the Australian market, we often find that people are packing and doing a longer trip, but you don't want to have to lug all these, you know, take mm. all these luggage with you. So it's really, really nice to have your laundry done for you uh, as an extra amenity. Money that's, can't uh, buy the laundry. That's exactly <laughs> <what> it's <laughs> been yes. very popular. When I'm on holidays. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk price. So the fares for this one for a veranda suite, it's an all veranda ship, mm -hmm. start at 12260 Australian dollars, all included, no bill when you get off the oh, ship at the end absolutely. of the cruise. That's the bit we love. I love <laughs> that. I love that. And, and, and that's for this particular Epicurean Spotlight voyage. Correct. So let's not forget there's a lot of food involved in that. Oh, yeah. So um, we've talked about the food on the shore, absolutely fabulous, but what about the food on the ship? Mm -hmm. Just remind us of some of those great venues there are. On board. Yes, and thank you, Peter. Well, we have up to seven dining venues on our ship. So it's really lovely. If you're doing a seven-night cruise, you can go to a different one every night of the week. <laughs> if you're on a longer sailing, people tend to find their favourite and like to go back there and, you know, try it again because, so of course, true, yeah. the menus are endless. But even in Compass Rose, which is our flagship dining mm. room, features on all of our vessels, open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, you can have a different dining experience there every day because yep. we absolutely take in uh, the chef's work, you know, with our local guides as well and our local um, experts and make sure that we have a beautiful, authentic symbiosis with the local cuisine so that when you're on the ship, you feel like this is what I might be eating in a restaurant shoreside as we're yep. passing through the Amalfi Coast or, yes. you know, through the Greek islands. And, and in terms of those shoreside locations, I believe there's Athens in Greece, um, where are we going in Istanbul? Bozca Boscada? Boscada, yes. When we go to Boscada, so that people can out to the, get out to the site of Troy. Oh. So that's very important historically for a lot of people, those history buffs. They love that. Absolutely. And then in, uh, in Italy, we've got Taormina, Sorrento, Capri, Rome. Oh, my gosh. And then off to France as well, we have the Provence. And Barcelona in Spain. All the best spots there. A bit of Sicily for those. We have ah. the most incredible shore excursion in Sicily that you can take from Naxos uh, where clients can, it's called In the Hidden Footsteps of the Godfather. Oh. So you actually go to, <laughs> I know it's hilarious, you go to two different villages where they actually seen uh, filmed scenes from the movies and you hear all about the history of it. There's photos of Al Pacino and all the crew there. I did it myself just last year when I was on the ship in the Med and it was such an incredible sense of this is what it must have been like for them to film The Godfather back in the 70s. Yeah. Yes. It was really, really a wonderful, wonderful shore excursion. And off the beaten path, I would never have known how to access those parts of Sicily on my own, but it gave me an affinity and a sense of what that area is like and the local communities as well. It's quite beautiful. How divine. So in that 10-night itinerary, how many included excursions are available for guests? Rose, we have 63 included shore excursions on that itinerary. 63. So this is, you know, again, the choice with Regent yeah. that I just love. So even if they've been to Rome before, they can have a completely different experience. They might like to go out into the Tuscan countryside and have lunch with a family that has, perhaps has been pressing olive oil oh, for that a generation. Yes, please. You know, really, and, and do something that's off the beaten path again and is not just going into town uh, to see the Sistine Chapel, you know, which a lot of people have done. Mm. But for for those who perhaps have not seen that yet, they could go and do a private viewing. Oh. So we absolutely have something that suits every need, every hobby, every desire. Can we uh, talk about something that's close to my heart, the wine? 
<laughs> As a collector or consumer, well, yeah. I think, I think one than the other. Let's rip the cork out and talk as <laughs> a consumer. Because I think you actually do have some fine wines on board and indeed some great visits. Yes, we do. And we've actually you know, we take a lot of time to make sure that the wine that we feature in our dining venues, which of course is all inclusive, is something that suits the palate of all our very international guests. So we've done that as well with our spotlight voyages. So one of the voyages we're going to be featuring is with Zinfandel winemakers, Ooh, okay. which are a very popular brand of wine. Are yeah. you familiar with them, Peter? I'm, I'm sure not. you've tried them. You're not. I oh, wish no. I was. You yes. absolutely must try. I'm going to go right them. out. And yes. Buy some. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you're a fan. <laughs> they're, they're very well known, perhaps more to the American clientele. Yes. Um, I'm certainly familiar with them having spent time on Regent and they have beautiful, beautiful red wines and it's something that people will really enjoy and it's going to enhance this particular itinerary, mm. which is a 14-night uh, Japan, a Tokyo round-trip experience. So it's not um, an itinerary where the wine will be featured in the ports of call, but it's something lovely that gives them the best of both worlds. While they're yep. off the ship, Rose, I'm sure I know what you're going to say here. What you, you can have off the ship, you have your sake, and when you get back on board, you'll have your red <laughs> drop of in I think. <laughs> Sounds divine. And now that one that you've just mentioned from Tokyo to Tokyo, 14 nights. Um, that's on board Seven Seas Explorer, departing 31st of March in 2025, and 44 excursions included. Only that just 44. sounds what's, only what's, 44. What's happening? Oh, Elsa, you've <laughs> dropped your bundle. <laughs> <laughs> it does include a land program as well, which I think is Excellent. a lovely extra immersion for clients. So they can do it before or after the cruise because it begins and ends in Tokyo. So they have a three night stay at the Hilton. And then during the day, we take them on some lovely local sightseeing, getting the best of the, the Ginza, the busy area, getting the full feel of the pace of Tokyo, but then also out to the, the shrines and the gardens so they get some lovely, you know, cultural, genteel sense of the, uh, the Japanese culture. Yep. And then uh, they have plenty of spare time as well. So we make sure that it's not too rush-rush or too pressured what I love about it is they're doing it either before the cruise, so they're meeting some of the people who are going to be their new friends, yeah. or they're doing it at the end of their voyage, and so they'll be with friends they've already made from the ship. So it's a really lovely, uh, you know, beginning or ending, a bookend to the cruise, and they'll be, of course, with region experts who will take care of them all the step of the way and at no extra cost to them. Excellent. I've got to say, I love the sound of, you know, matching the Japanese cuisine with wine because apparently dumplings or dim sum and wine tastings are a huge deal and Aussies don't really know about that so much yet. They won't, but they will after this cruise. <laughs> yes. <I think>. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous. That does sound delicious. Now, you mentioned getting hands-on as well, so I want to just backtrack because um, – I'm a bit of an inner foodie and I'm a bit of an inner child at times, but I love the idea of something called the culinary arts kitchen classes. Can you talk me through that? Okay, that they're, they're very, very popular. What we've done is we have one station for 18 people. So you're not having to share the space. You can get as messy as you like. Yeah. And the best thing is someone cleans up your mess at the end of oh, the that class. that sounds like me. Yes. <laughs> There's a huge range of classes to choose from. And as mentioned before, we do have these Epicurean explorations where they can go with the chef into town, go to local markets and bring it back on board. So it's an extension of that. Or on a sea day, they can just take part in one of these beautiful culinary kitchens. So they might, uh, for example, choose to a paella making class. Mm. So they can go home and, you know, spoil all their friends and show off what they've learned in the yep. class, yeah. which is just so that, much fun. That doesn't sound messy at all. No, it doesn't no. sound messy Prawns at all. Prawns and <laughs> sausage <laughs> flying everywhere. Here we go. Okay, but you, know, you do take kids on board, Regent, and so um, apparently there's something called the Master Chef Junior. It's, I am so excited about this program. It's going to be in Alaska for the first time on Regent in 2023 and it's going to be on Seven Seas Explorer in the Culinary Centre. And so, yes, we do get some children coming on board in the Alaskan summer school uh, months, school holidays for the US. And uh, so it's absolutely lovely. The children get to be in charge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> and their sous chef will be grandma or grandpa or the parents. And so it's a lovely opportunity for them to have a, a you know a learning experience as well, but make it really fun where they get to boss us around. I love and it. someone cleans up after That's yes. exactly right. The <laughs> most just, just important, important detail. <laughs> <laughs> Look, these Epicurean spotlight voyages are sounding more and more fun by they the second. They sound very tasty. Especially with the uh the passionate winemakers and chefs and entertainers. Uh, there's not much you could really do to top any of that. 
Um, now, I, I want to know just a few details about the Tokyo trip. So perhaps where are we stopping in at the ports? Okay, yes. Yeah, so the fabulous thing about this round trip Tokyo itinerary, Rose, is that it does take in a lot of beautiful ports of call, including Nagoya, Kyoto. Now, in Kyoto, we always give our guests an overnight stay there. Oh, cool. Because I think to be able to get up into the old villages of Kyoto oh. and perhaps have a glimpse of the geisha or their training Maiko with their indoor shoes, going through the cobblestone streets at night with the lanterns hanging through the villages there and that sense of mystery that surrounds them and their beautiful makeup. It really is something just beautiful. And of an evening, it has a different feel than it does during the day. Mm. As much as possible, we try on any Regent itinerary to give clients a longer stay in port. It is not in our best interest to limit that time. We're not mm. trying to get them back on the ship. We want them to come back feeling they've really gotten the best out of each destination, which really as far as we're concerned is a full day stay and an overnight where possible. Yes. I love it. She's doing the storytelling thing again, Pam. I love it too. Oh, she's so good. So after Kyoto, we have a lovely overnight stay there and then we go into Kochi and then Beppu and then Seoul. So it actually goes to South Korea okay. as well and then an overnight in Shanghai so they can experience the nightlife there as well. Well, then back to Kagoshima and then back to beautiful Tokyo. Oh, wow. So you get China and you get uh, South Korea. Absolutely, yes. We do have some itineraries in Japan that are purely, uh, you know, an in-depth dive into the Japan uh, ports, but it's uh, some of them have a bit of South Korea as well as China like this one does, which is lovely. And you've got some optional additional um, three-night post-cruise options there for guests. Yes. So as mentioned, we have the included three-night land program where we have our clients staying at the Hilton, but we also have several, uh, which is an Edo experience. So again, Ooh. they can, if they've perhaps been to Tokyo before and they want to have more of a, of a cultural immersion, then we can take them out to some of the onsens, have that spy oh. experience. If people are doing a bit of a, a wellness cruise, you know, we mm. see this at the moment, um, ladies going away in a group to celebrate a 50th birthday, for example. And mm. we have itineraries where there's no single supplement. So they don't have to pay for the extra person that's not there. They wow. can have their own suite to themselves and really go away and do our beautiful fitness classes as well as um, to spa treatments treat themselves well on board and then shoreside go and have some lovely experiences like this. So it becomes a well-rounded wellness getaway. It sounds, <laughs> sounds fantastic. Absolutely blissful. No, Peter, you're not invited. <laughs> 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 Let's talk price tag on these ones, Elsa. So for this particular 14-night itinerary, looking at 16200 per person mm -hmm. for a lead-in category deluxe veranda suite. Again, the Seven Seas Explorer is an all-sweet, all-balcony vessel mm. with an incredible crew-to-guest ratio of one to 1.3 wow. and fully inclusive. So just a reminder when they get off the ship at the end of the cruise, there is no bill to go home to. Mm. So it's really lovely peace of mind. You unpack once and do whatever you please. The choice is yours all day. I love Sounds it. Sounds fantastic. And it feels like that's just a taste of what the Epicurean Spotlight Voyages have in store. I mean, that that's just two. You mean it's a starter? It's a starter. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. That's quite yeah. all right. <laughs> and for those who want to see the main meal, yeah. they can go to rssc.com or contact their travel advisor. And look for more on Regent Seven Seas Cruises at cruisepassenger.com.au. And, of course, don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter do. to keep in touch with the entire world of cruising. Fabulous. Elsa, thank you so much. They, they sound like terrific journeys. A very big cheers to Elsa McLean from Regent Seven Seas Cruises for joining us yet again today with yet more amazing stories. <laughs> I want to go. Thank you, Elsa. You had me at dumplings. <laughs> Thank you. Salute and kanpai. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. And we'll see you again for the next episode. See you next time.